But man, I love my micro warbirds. And this would go perfectly with my E Flight Ulmex MiG 15. Two discontinued legends. Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to John's RC. So today I'm really excited to show you guys this Great Plains Micro F86 Sabre. Now this is a plane that we purchased from Pegasus Hobbies as a used model and we actually tried to record this twice. It came used but then I made it even more used. So let me just open the box. So it came with the original manual which is really nice. I like having my manuals. Then you have the actual plane. So this is the Micro F86 and I actually uh, flown on my E-Flight UMX MiG-15 with my flying field friend and we had a little dog fight. I think it's still up on YouTube. But this is an awesome looking uh, micro plane. It's a four channel model, so that means you're gonna have your throttle control, it's a ducted fan. You have your ailerons, your elevator, and your rudder. So when we originally tried to record this, it was very, very tail heavy. And the way we uh, fixed that was there's this little nook uh, in the front of the nose here and we just wedged some putty in there so it weighs itself out and it actually flew pretty well till I got cocky I flipped it over and I didn't have enough elevator to uh, get it back up and the only real thing that happened was the horizontal stabilizer came off and I just had to like repair it with foam tack and blend room tape and then these little control horns came off of the ailerons this seems to be like the weak point of the plane but other than that, um, it wasn't a bad crash. So, yeah, this uses the SLT protocol, and I originally got my Radio Master TX16 because of this plane. Because I have a Tactic Any leak that I could have plugged into my old DX8 G2, but sorry, uh, G1, but my Tactic Any leak broke. So we couldn't find any replacements online and we've already been leaning to get this transmitter. So this trend, sorry, this plane is what made us get this and we just bit. So yeah, I have it uh, programmed for just the SLT protocol and I'll show you guys that it works right now. Uh, I'll also show you the adapter. So you can see I have my aileron control, my elevator, my rudder and to arm the motor you full throttle down then you have a throttle so if you look over here at the adapter uh it actually used this mini dean's adapter which we didn't have a battery for on two cell anyway so what we did was we just took the normal two cell uh, uh, connector i don't know what it's called i think it's ph something something uh but we'll put it in the description and we just soldered in an adapter now the problem with this is it's very, very long and the Spectrum batteries that we're using are already, uh, they ha have a really long cable. So putting this in is going to be a hassle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a way to put this in and then we're gonna put this rubber band over the canopy so it holds better. But yeah, uh, the model has a wingspan of 15 inches. It has a length of 14.4 inches and has a flying weight of 67 grams. So pretty light for a micro. I really like the looks of it. So let's go and fly it. All right guys, so I have the F86 all plugged in and you can see I have my little rubber band around it, but I have all of my surfaces. So I have my aileron control, elevator, rudder, make sure it's going the right way, and my throttle. So the last time I flew this, I didn't fly it with the landing gear because it didn't come with one. But I was actually gifted uh, the landing gears by my flying field friend who owned one and crashed it and deemed uh, it wasn't worth his time to rebuild it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know the actual takeoff distance of this thing. So I'm just going to hope it has enough runway. If it doesn't, then I'll just take off via hand launch. Okay, she is up, but needs some expo. 
and lower the rates. But she's flying. She's pretty loud. It's an aileron trim. But she's kicking. So she's very stable. Um, you have to be really easy on the controls with her though. I think most Great Plains models are like that. And also, for some reason, my roll rate uh, for right is a lot less than my roll rate on the left. So, if I can show you here, this is, that's full right aileron, right? This is left aileron. I'll, it's gonna be really long to do a slow, I mean a fast roll with my right aileron. That's quite odd. I might have to change my minimum and maximum on my controller. But she's flying really well. She's super stable for her size. And you know, micro EDFs always sound a bit funky. But I actually think I prefer this one out of most of my micro EDFs. She's a bit louder, but compared to, if you remember that citation, man, that thing was loud. And with that twin EDF. <laughs> So I'm just cruising around on, let me see, like less than 50% throttle, maybe 40%, and she's got a lot of speed. With my added nose weight and the extra battery weight, because this isn't actually the recommended battery, I think it was like a 180 mil or something. 180 milliamp battery, I'm assuming it's 300. So, with both of those added weights, I don't think I'm, like, I'm going to be able to get a good roll. I can try. Yeah, it kind of just like stalls out there. I'm going to try again. Yeah, looping. Sorry, did I say roll? I don't even remember. I was trying to say loop if I said roll. Looping is going to be a bit odd. I'm gonna kick the power. Her speed doesn't change much from, you see, this is 40% throttle. And if I kick it to 100, there's not much of a change here. Which is quite funny. But man, I love my micro warbirds. And this would go perfectly with my E Flight Yomex MiG 15. Two discontinued legends. Lowering my throttle here, get some slow action. I'm gonna be landing soon because I don't wanna overwork the motor. That's my main concern with these old planes. Like my Flyzone DR1, this, my Flyzone SE5. I have too big of batteries to uh, get it to, or to punch a throttle because I have like 75C batteries and when the marketed one is like 15C so I don't want to overwork it and I'm also, I might be flying off the actual timer I don't have a timer set for this bird alright, I'm gonna go ahead and land I still have it flying a bit nose heavy and I haven't trimmed it, I don't know why. If 
Okay, we got a successful video this time. All right, so that was my flight on the Great Plains F86. And man, you know, she's actually an awesome, awesome micro. Uh, she looks great, she flies all right. And, you know, it doesn't have any of the advanced stabilization that the E-Flight Yomex MiG-15 had because it's about 11 years older. So it doesn't have that A3X, so it doesn't have that safe. But really, she still flies awesome. It still has some similar characteristics to the MiG-15. Like, the elevator didn't have a lot of throw. I think I still have a video of my channel where I was flying my MiG-15 and I rolled it and it got really close to the ground I rolled it back. It's sort of the same thing going on here. Very little uh, elevator. And also the ailerons. I have more throw on my left aileron than I do on my right. I don't know why. I'll probably figure out some reason why that's happening. But she's an awesome plane. She has a lot of power. Um, she's kind of odd when it comes to throttle uh, control. When you push her to 100%, the speed doesn't really change from like 40%. It kind of just sounds louder. But she's still pretty decently fast for her size. And with the battery and the extra nose weight because I added the putty and the bigger battery, she did not loop the best because it kind of just stalled out at the end of my loop. But still, she is a pretty good plane, and for a $50 find at Pegasus Hobbies, I'm really happy with her. So, yeah, thanks for joining me to John's RC. And if you're new to this channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Awesome flight, John. Congrats.